All right. Uh, just uh, real quick, I want to um, go through this uh, opening page, and this is the Contents 1519. Is that correct up on the that, screen? That is correct. All right. And has your name on it, correct? That's correct. All right. And then we have a reference guide right here. And if you would just uh, explain just some of the uh, various sources of information that have been admitted before this jury that uh, you ultimately synthesize into this summary timeline. Okay. What we have here is we're going to have a um, cell phone, phone uh, cell bright extraction report. It's going to be for Paul Murdaugh, which as you go through this timeline, PM is going to refer to Paul Murdaugh. We're going to have AM, which is going to be Alex Murdaugh's cell phone extraction, and then MM, which is going to be Maggie Murdaugh. So anytime you see the abbreviations, that's what it's going to refer to. We have um, their, their cell phone extractions here. We also have the FBI telemetry report. We have the FBI cast data. We also have different, um, different uh, reports from the phones, like the Axiom reports. We have an ALPR report in here, which is actually probably not in this, the condensed one. That's going to be automated license plate reader data for Maggie Murdaugh's um, Mercedes. We're also going to have some Snapchat data and then data from Rogan Gibson, Paul Murdaugh, Alex Murdaugh, Maggie Murdaugh, and Buster Murdaugh's CDRs, which is the call data records from Verizon. Yeah, pause you real quick. So we have extractions. Mm -hmm. Tell the difference to the uh, jury, and I don't mean to point out with the stick, uh, uh, between uh, an extraction and then CDRs or cell data records, please. So the extraction is going to be what, like Britt Dove testified, what he actually extracted out of the phone. And then the CDRs is going to be what Verizon testified, which is going to be their records of phone calls mm -hmm. and text messages. So two separate um, data sources from two separate entities. All right, and continue on, please, with the remainder of the data in, in your summary timeline. We have referenced here a couple different, like, Knowledge C database. That's, that's kind of like the Axiom database. It's just another database that was, you know, records were provided to me from. We also have a PMPED building access log. And then um, in the, the big timeline, we have the 911 recordings. And then just want to point out a Dylan Hightower extraction. That would have been the first phone extraction of Alex's phone two days after the 7th. Right. And then we have the GM OnStar data. Okay. All right, and then down at the bottom here, we have some uh, color-coded uh, things on the left of the screen and then a box on the right. So quickly, uh, explain to the jury uh, what those uh, reference points mean, please. On the right of the screen, you're going to see the 2021 Suburban log file excerpt. Um, Farkowski from FBI had that Excel sheet with all the different colors and everything. This is going to be a uh, reference guide so when you're going through this, what the colors actually mean on the data. Right, and give then, an example what you mean by that. So you're going to see kind of that, that reddish, pinkish color. That's going to mean that the infotainment center is booting up. So when we go through this timeline, you're going to see that data section highlighted with that color. That's what you'll know is happening with the data. If you see pink, you're, it's going to be a propulsion. When you see blue, it means that it's either in and out of park, and that's kind of just how we're going to be reading it as we go along the timeline. All right, and then these addresses have colors over here, uh, and just we don't have to go through every one, but the first one, that red one, what that one is that? 4147 Moselle Road. All right, so if we see that little red box with an arrow on it, that's Moselle on the map? That is correct. And then uh, the green is what? It's going to be um, Almeda, the Almeda property. Okay. We'll talk about the others as we go through. All right. All right, let's start moving through it. Just give me one second. All right, uh, starting, all right, so this timeline, this condensed timeline begins roughly when? Around 6 p.m. All right, on what day? Uh, June 7, 2021. All right, and uh, let's start at 604, and I want to move through this expeditiously, and we'll stop and, and uh, talk about some specific entries as we go through, okay? okay. All right, and uh, so starting there at 64, uh, does Paul Murdoch have any phone activity? He does. He calls Will Loving. And as you can see in the parentheses, it's going to say PM extraction. That means it was pulled off of Paul Murdoch's phone extraction, just okay. for reference. All right, and uh, Will Loving, that's the individual that testified weeks ago? That is correct. 
And uh, it's 608, uh, what activity was he on Paul's phone? He makes an outgoing call to dad, which is identified as Alex Murdoch. It shows answered, but um, one second long. All right, and what was the source of that information? That was from Paul Murdoch's phone extraction. It does not show up in um, Alex Murdoch's original logical dump or the second one from Brit Dove, but it does show up on his CDRs from Verizon. So that'd be the records that Verizon actually keeps for the phone. All right, and can a user of a phone affect the, uh, the CDRs that are with the Verizon phone company? They cannot, no. Or can the user affect what data remains on their phone? Yes. And frequently throughout this timeline do we see instances in which there was a call logged on the CD on Alec Murdoch's CDRs but was missing from his phone from the extraction? That is correct. Don't leave the witness. All right. uh, can you explain uh, any difference between the CDRs as it relates to Alec Murdoch's phone and uh, what, whether or not there's any missing call locked on the extraction from this phone. As we go through this extraction, you're going to see that multiple instances we're going to have calls showing on Alex Murdoch's CDRs that are not that we could not find on the logical extraction or the Brit Dove full extraction of Alex's phone, and that's going to be notated on the bottom if we if it was not in the extraction. All right. Uh, it's 60948. Uh, do we have any communications uh, on Maggie's phone? This is going to be an iMessage from Maggie Murdaugh to Paul Murdaugh stating, You okay getting a little foot massage? Then I'm heading home. And that was obtained from Maggie Murdaugh and Paul Murdaugh's extra phone extractions. It's 61001 going to the bottom of uh, this page, that being page number two. Uh, is there a, another message from Maggie to Paul Murdaugh? This is also going to be a message to Paul stating, love you and Blanca cooked you dinner. Right, moving on to page three. And what does this reflect right here? This is going to be from FBI agent Matt Wilde. This is going to be from his report. This is for Paul Murdaugh. You're going to identify that in the right-hand corner where it says Paul. Just for reference, anytime you see a map, if you look on the right-hand corner, it's going to tell you whose map that is for. All right. And uh, just generally remind the jury what this uh, map uh, reflects, please. This is just showing generally where the cell towers are located and where the area, whenever, um, like a phone call or text message, where it was pinging during that time for Paul. And these little uh, red things right here with the angles on it, what do those reflect? That's going to be where the cell tower is and what angle the call would have originated or, you know, take place from. All right, and down at the bottom, what's the first time recorded for Paul's cell phone as it pings on these cell towers? It's going to be 61742. And can you describe to the jury generally uh, where these cell towers reflect Paul's phone's moving? So it'd be um, at the Beaufort area down the right hand side, moving up towards Moselle, which you can see in the far right corner, that little um, badge looking red dot. All right, up here at the top center, what is that right there? That's going to be an arc. It's just a distance arc. But the red dot, what is that? The red dot, that's going to be 4147 Moselle Road. All right. And uh, what times does Paul's phone uh, ping off any cell tower near Moselle? Um, 6.53 p.m., 7.05, and 7.30.05. All right, and we see a three right there. Does that refer, or does it, what does that three refer to as it relates to that cell tower location near Moselle? It's just going to show you what side of the, the cell tower it's on, what arc. And what time does it first ping on, uh, on sector one facing Moselle? 7.05, p.m. All right, moving to uh, continue on page three. Um, we have a time reference at 62053. Can you explain to the jury what, if anything, that indicates? We have Maggie Murdaugh. She received a phone call from Proctor Marion. That's how it showed up in her phone. Um, through the phone number, it's actually Marion Proctor. That's just how it relays in the phone. It shows rejected. All right, and uh, after that, what, if any, communications were there? Um, right after that, at 62128, Maggie Murdoch sends a text message to Marion stating, can't talk, getting a uh, food massage, we'll call you back. That was from her phone extraction. Moving on to 623, are there any communications with Maggie and Paul? Um, there are. Paul sends a message to his mom at 62327 uh, stating, what did she make? 
and then Maggie replies back shortly after saying country fried steak and mac and cheese. Below that, we have an orange and blue box. What does that represent? So this is going to be from the FBI telemetry data from that cell spreadsheet that's ready into evidence. And this is just showing with that color coordination I talked about earlier. The orange is going to show a, a system startup. And from previous testimony, that could be, you know, unlocking a car, locking it, getting in close range with the key fob, opening up the rear hatch, just something that makes, you know, when you get in your car, you kind of hear that, that noise before you start it up, the telemetry. It's just inner workings, you know, anything could really cause it. Well, I'm asking you, going back to that map, the incident location at Moselle where Paul and Maggie were found murdered, what county is that in? That's going to be Colleton County. And then if you look, you know, we have the pink, which is going to kind of show propulsion, and then blue, which is going to show some kind of shift in the vehicle transmission. All right, down to the bottom, 624, what is that? 624, too, that's, that shows from the FBI report, telemetry report, that um, the Suburban shows a device connection. That would be Alec Murdoch's phone? That'd be correct. Moving on to uh, 624 p.m., uh, is there any data points uh, as it relates to the defendant's Suburban? It is. We have one at 624.18 um, around the PMPED law firm. All right. And what time is that? No, 624? 624.18, correct. All right. And that map there, is that uh, a data point from the CAS data that you just explained to the jury? That is correct. All right. Moving down, we have some various uh, messages from, uh, from some of the individuals, is that right? We do. Okay. We have um, Alex Murdoch receiving a phone call from Jay Parker at 625. 627, Paul is uh, sending a message to Britt saying maybe Saturday. He uh, calls Robert Boyle shortly after. And then at 838 p.m., Rogan calls Marianne Dempsey. And to your recollection, uh, what is uh, Marianne Dempsey to Rogan at this period of time? I believe he's a uh, girlfriend currently at the time. All right, moving on to page five. Mm -hmm. uh, what does this uh, map represent? When, who is this from, this map? This is going to be from Matt Wild from the FBI. This is directly from his report. And what uh, phone does this uh, map reflect? Top right, it's going to say Alex Murdaugh with associated cell phone. All right, and then there's a box below that. Explain to the jury again what that box represents. So the box below that, that's going to represent all the times that the pings were logged that um, Matt Wild actually put in the report. And then the black circle with the angle in the middle, what is that? That's going to show you the cell tower and then the, the kind of angle that the calls or text would have been in. And what property is in the, the sector of that cell tower? 4147 Moselle Road. And it's that identified by that red badge looking dot. All right. On here, this, this box with the times, those are times of what again? This would have been times of activity um, that it that would send to a cell tower that they would have data on. In the 6 o'clock hour, what is the latest time period that you see out of Murdoch's phone reflecting activity? Uh, 6.52 p.m. And then after that, what's the next time period that you've seen reflecting activity? The next time showing on the map is going to be 9.04.24 p.m. Does the defendant's cell phone reflect any activity between 6.52 and 9.04? Between 6.52 and 9.04, there's no activity reflected. At least on the, the cell pinging. That is correct. All right, at 6.40.01, what activity, if any, is reflected? Um, Paul calls, and it's going to show up as PA in the extraction, which is Alex Murdoch based on the phone number. It shows it was answered. It was 2 minutes and 29 seconds long. This call also does not show up in the phone extractions for Alex Murdoch, just well, on his CDRs. It was on the defendant's CDRs? That is correct. All right. And it was, also in, it was also in Paul's phone. It shows the phone call. Uh, 642, and uh, what, is, what if anything's reflected? We have a, a suburban device connection to iPhone from the FBI report at 642.48. And at 642.54, um, we show the suburban arrives at 4147 Moselle Road based on the GM OnStar data. 
All right, and going on to page six, is that the uh, your cast map reflecting that data point you just described? That is correct. It's going to be the 642.54 data point. And what happens at that moment? That's when Alex Murdoch is going to arrive back from the PUP and PMPED law firm that from work that day. All right, moving on, uh, <coughs> 64350, what, if any, activity do you see? It shows that Maggie Murdaugh's phone uh, had a missed call from PA, which is Alex Murdaugh. It shows, mi miss it shows missed, but also um, it shows up in Alex Murdaugh's CDRs, but does not show up in either one of the phone extractions. All right, and moving on, uh, we have a, a couple of the orange and white boxes. Tell the jury again what those reflect. So these are just going to reflect some kind of system boot up. Doesn't mean the car moved or did anything. It just means that door was opened. It's it just something triggered the car to kind of do a little internal boot up from previous testimony. At uh, 653.44, what if any activity do you see? Um, Paul Murdaugh calls John Marvin. It shows a minute and 42 seconds long, and that's based off of Paul's phone extraction. So your understanding when you see those times of the call lengths, does that also include connection time as well? It does, based on previous testimony from Verizon that could include um, how long it takes to, you know, to get the actual network connected. All right, and then at the uh, 7 o'clock hour, what if any communications are on Paul's phone? So Paul sends a text message to um, Claude C.B. Rowe saying, are you coming tomorrow? And then shortly after, he sends another text saying, sunflowers died, we need to plow them under ASAP. And that was uh, based off his phone extraction. Moving on now to page 7. Um, do we have uh, some activity at 702.29? We do. Maggie Murdaugh calls Alex Murdaugh. It shows two seconds. Um, and this, this also does not show on Alex Murdaugh's um, extraction. It shows on the CDRs, and it also shows on Maggie's phone that Maggie called Alex, but does not show on Alex's phone that that call was there. Makes it missing from his phone, though, correct? That is correct. All right. Missing in the call log of the phone. All right, 703 to 711. Uh, what, if anything, is reflected on Alex's phone? His phone's showing approximately 165 steps taken during that time frame. Right. And then what happens at 704? 704, um, through the catch data database, it shows that um, Paul Murdaugh is at the residence of 4147 Moselle Road. Uh, does Maggie's uh, phone reflect any activity as we move on to the 704 time period? Um, her phone showed that between 704 and 817, her um, phone was uh, it showed a Bluetooth connection to MBUX95224, which is her Mercedes Benz. And uh, so anytime we see MBUX95224, what, if anything, does that represent? That's going to reflect her Mercedes-Benz. MB for Mercedes-Benz? That is correct. All right. Uh, moving on, at 705, does Maggie call anyone? She does. Um, she calls Marion at 705.13. It shows answered seven seconds. At 705.55, does, uh, is there any reflection of the communication between Alec and Maggie Murrow? There is. Al Alec sends a message to, um, in his phone, it's Maggie May. Stating, Paul said you were getting a petty. Call when, call when you done. That's from the Alex. Uh, that's from the extraction. Right. Uh, moving on, do we have any communications between Maggie and Paul during this time period? At 7:05:32, we have Maggie calling Paul. It shows answered a minute and 31 seconds. And then does Maggie attempt to call Marion again? Uh, that's correct. And I'm sorry, I'm. That would be at the bottom of the screen. Yep, that'd be right the 70749. Uh, Maggie Murdoch calls Marion. And when it says Marion, it's Marion Proctor. All right, moving on to page eight, we have another map. Can you generally explain what this represents to the jury, please? So, in the top uh, right hand corner, we have Maggie Murdoch with associated phone number. We have two points, 4147 Moselle Road in the red, and the green's going to be the Almeda property. When you're looking at this map, number one is going to be closer to Charleston, and it's working its way. Maggie is working her way towards Moselle in this map. All right, and the first time period you see on uh, dot number, this number one? 
It's going to be 7.07.49 p.m. And the latest time period you see on the dot that's numbered 5. That is correct. That's going to be in the Walterboro area. It's going to be 7.50.20. 7.50.20 is going to be the latest dot. And that's in the Walterboro area. All right, moving on, uh, looking down at 709.43, what, if any, activity do we see on Maggie's phone? Maggie calls her mom. It shows answered eight minutes and 17 seconds long. Would that be Ms. Brandstetter? That is correct. Uh, we have an orange box. Tell the jury that quickly, please. So that's just showing a system boot up. Could have been getting close to the Suburban, unlocking it, locking it, opening up a door, or it could just be some kind of internal components based on previous testimony from FBI. Right. Uh, after that, we have two entries. Can you tell the jury what those two entries are, the time periods, and what they represent, please? Yep. So the next two entries is going to be 71413 to 72219. It's going to be Paul Murdaugh's iPhone showing approximately 208 steps traveled during that time period. And the one below it is going to be 71535 to 72152. This is going to be from Alex's phone showing that approximately 200 steps were taken during that time frame. So we have 208 steps taken from Paul during his time frame, and then Alex is around 200 steps traveled. And both those time periods for those steps for Alex and Paul, are those generally roughly the same? Generally the Consistent. same. Consistent? That's correct. Right. Um, 71844, what, if any, activity do you see? Um, Alex Murdoff sends a text message to C.B. Rowe saying, call me please. Mm -hmm. Going now to uh, page nine. Uh, at the top, uh, those two entries, again, explain those two entries to the jury. So um, the first entry is going to be Paul Murdaugh's iPhone from 72503 to 73447, and it's showing 139 steps taken during that time period. It's an approximate. Uh, 72835 to 73711 is going to be Alex Murdaugh's iPhone, showing approximately 47 steps traveled during that time period. All right, 7.30 p.m., we have another data point indicating Maggie's uh, trip home to Moselle. That is correct. <coughs> All right, we've got another map. Tell the jury what this one is, please. This map's just showing um, that, you know, her phone was pinging at starting at 7.30. Whose phone is this? This again? is going to be uh, Paul. I'm sorry, Paul Murdaugh. It's going to be in the right-hand corner. It's going to say Paul Murdaugh with the phone number on top. This is just showing where his phone was pinging on June 7, 2021, starting at 7.30 and then all the way to 8.40 p.m. All right, we see uh, two cell towers there and then some arcs. Where do those arcs intersect? The arcs intersect um, close to the property at Moselle Road. And if you would, uh, just tell the jury uh, the earliest time that's reflected here and the latest time that's reflected here. The earliest time reflected is going to be 7.30.05, and the latest time reflected is going to be 7.40.21 p.m. on June 7, 2021. So Paul's uh, phone is at the Moselle location, according to the data. That is correct. All right. Bottom of page nine, uh, do we have any communications uh, between Maggie and Mary and Proctor? We do. At 7.31.13 p.m., we show a call from Maggie to Marion at 7.39, which is the length of the call. Seven minutes and 39 seconds? That's correct. Does that include connection time as well? It does. Uh, do we have any step data on Paul's phone in the time period around this time? Paul's phone shows between 735.10 and 741.43. It shows roughly around 171 steps traveled during that time frame. 737 and 738, do we see any uh, activity on Paul's phone with some of his friends? Yeah, Paul receives a Snapchat message from Michelle Beck stating, uh, BC, I have short-term memory loss, and that was based off his phone extraction. And then um, Paul Murdoch receives an iMessage from Megan Kimbrell stating, Paul. Okay. All right, moving now to page 10. Um, Going to 739.55, can you tell the jury what that data point uh, reflects on your summary timeline? So from earlier testimony, you've seen this um, 
this video. This is just a thumbnail picture, and this is when it's shown it was created in Paul's, Paul Murdoch's phone. And uh, we have a little screenshot of the creation time. It's going to show 739.55 is when uh, this thumbnail was created in Paul's phone. And remind the jury what video that is. I'll say we, we got a thumbnail there, but yep. what video is that? This is going to be that Snapchat, Snapchat video that was sent to a few friends of the tree. You have Alex Murdaugh on the tree that's um, leaning over. All right. And again, this, this is when that video, at least the timestamp, was its creation? That, that's correct, based on previous testimony, yes. All right. 7.41. To 748, uh, what, if anything, is reflected on Alex's phone? We, um, we show that 29 steps were traveled on his phone, approximately between 741 and 748. Right. And uh, just talked about the Snapchat video, looking at this map. Um, whose phone is this? And explain these data points to the jury, if you would, please. Or whose phone is this first, if you would, please? So this is going to be Paul Murdaugh's iPhone, and below it, it's going to be his iPhone location data. So this is not going to be Verizon location. This is going to be location data directly off of his phone. So this is GPS data that's more specific? That is correct. All right. And uh, we see a number of dots up here. What is this area up here generally um, sort of in the center of this image? That's going to be um, the kennel area. And then there's that little house. The cabin? The cabin. All right. And what time periods in that upper box do we see GPS data on Paul's phone? Uh, up there in the general cabinet. We're seeing between uh, 7.45 and 7.54 is um, location data for that, that area. 7.54 or 7.56? 7.56, sorry, it's on RC. All right. And then we have two data points at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Is that uh, where is generally that on the property? That's going to be what uh, previous testimony um, talked about, like a dove field. Mm -hmm. It's going to be past the, the main house, closer to the Godly Farm roadside. And that's going to be a data point at um, 8 and 42 seconds and 8 and 44 seconds. 8 p.m.? That's correct, 8 p.m., June 7. And then down at the bottom of page 10, is there any step data on Paul's phone? Um, there is. It shows approximately 89 steps traveled during what time periods? Uh, 7.45 p.m. to 7.55. Moving on to uh, page 11, uh, we have a map. Tell the jury what, whose phone that is and uh, what that data point is, please. So this is going to be Maggie Murdaugh's phone. This is going to be um, Verizon location data. And what we see here is the tower and then the arc of the tower. This is going to be in the Walterboro area. The time is uh, 7.50.03 p.m. All right. And moving now, we're starting to see some references, and there's a little uh, battery symbol on the side. What does that represent? So that's going to represent um, battery life. So right here, this is going to be at 7.52.28. It's going to show Paul Murdaugh's iPhone battery at 7%. And in your review generally of Paul's uh, cell phone data, was it uh, generally consistent for him to continue to use his phone even if he had a low battery life on it? That's correct. Right. And is that uh, also uh, consistent with the testimony from David Grubbs from yesterday? The day Previous before? testimony, yes. All right, below that uh, 755 time period, we have two entries. Can you explain those two entries uh, to the jury and how they relate to each other, if anything? So 755.44 to 805.28, we have Paul Murdaugh's iPhone showing approximately 262 steps traveled. And um, a close time frame from 755.32 to 805.07, we show Alex's iPhone traveling approximately 270 steps during that time period. And then at 756, what is, uh, what is reflected as it relates to that Snapchat video? This is when the Snapchat video uh, referencing Alex Murdaugh would have been sent through Paul's Snapchat account to his friends, right. based on previous testimony. And it was created, you already testified to this, but it was created when? I believe 739.55. Right. And it was sent out to his friends when? At 7.56 p.m. <clears throat> 
Moving on to page 12 at 757. Does one of his friends respond? Um, yes, he receives a uh, Snapchat message from Brian Murdaugh. Nope, sorry. Stating, damn, man, needs some straps. Oh, it. All right. Now we're moving into the uh, 8 p.m. hour on uh, June 7th, 2021. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. We have a map here. Uh, first of all, in the right corner, whose phone is this? This is going to be Paul Murdaugh's phone. This is going to be his iPhone location data. Right. And starting up at the, uh, it's sort of the uh, top center, more to the right. Um, where does that location generally? That's going to be the um, little cabin on the property. All right. And uh, what is the uh, data point? Uh, what's the time on that data point up there? I believe it says 8.06, 20 p.m. All right. And then we see the dots uh, sort of moving down. And in what lo direction are they generally moving? That's moving towards the main house on the property. All right. And then down at the bottom of the screen, at what time do we see that data point uh, stop at the main residence? Uh, 8.14. Uh, what's the first data point? Uh, 8.08.45 and then 8.14. Paul's at the main yeah. residence at what time? First? 8.08.45 p.m. All right, and just uh, on page uh, 13, we have some earlier data points. This, is this uh, map kind of out of order just a little bit? It is. So this is just going to be um, earlier data points at 805.14 and 804.45, just showing some um, location data from his iPhone. All right. So that one should have gone before this one, the one at the bottom of page, sorry, page 12. That's correct. Uh, which reflects Paul again getting back to the main residence at what time? 8.08.45 p.m. Looking below, uh, again on page 13, uh, do we see uh, two entries uh, for Paul and Alex's phone? And if so, please explain to the jury what they are. So for Alex's phone, we show between 8.05 and 8.09 um, that his phone approximately took 54 <laughs> steps traveled during that time period. And then for Paul, we show 805.46 to 815.24. Um, we show approximately 303 steps traveled during that time period. Okay. Moving on to page 14, do we see that same map again of Paul's phone reflecting him arriving at uh, the residence at 808? 808.45, correct. And then still pinging there at what time, at the bottom time? Uh, 8.14 p.m. Right. Again, at uh, 8.07, uh, what, if anything, do we see? At 8.07.20, we see that Paul is sending um, Snapchats to a few friends. Right. That's based off his Snapchat records. All right, next entry is in purple, and then there's kind of a line going from that. Explain what that purple reference, that time period references, and then the line that travels down the side of your timeline. Explain to the jury what that's going to represent generally to the various phones as we go forward. As we go forward, anytime you see in purple, that's going to represent Maggie Murdaugh's phone. And for this instant, it's going to represent on the left-hand side, the line going down. Anytime you see a line next to something, that means whatever it says on the left. So if it says device locked, it means the device was locked during those other time periods. So this is going to show from 8.11.08 to 8.31.15 that Maggie's iPhone um, was locked. And as we move down, you can see it continue to the next page. That, that means during those times it, it's locked. All right. So we'll see multiple of those as you go forward, just explaining time periods where various devices were locked or other act, uh, things were going on. That is correct. All right. Moving on to page 15, uh, we have a map. Um, explain to the jury uh, whose phone this is and what it represents. <laughs> This is going to be for CB Row, and this is a uh, overview map. You can see Augusta, North Augusta area, and it's showing the sector and the the tower that it's pinging off of at 713.15 in the North Augusta, Augusta area. You say 713 or 813? I'm sorry, 813.15. All right. 
So C.B. Rose phone is pinging over here, way over here in Augusta, is that right? That is correct. All right, moving to the next map, uh, whose phone is this? If you could tell whose phone this is, and then what data points uh, you see on this particular map. So this is going to be Paul Murdaugh's iPhone location data, so it's going to be separate from like Verizon location data. And this is showing at the area of the main house, bottom left. And the data starts at 814 and goes all the way to 835.07. 835, Paul's phone is located where? At the main house, 4147 Moselle Road. And down at the bottom of page 15, do we have any step reference for Paul? We do. From 815.55 to 821.45, um, we're showing approximately 140 steps traveled. Paul arrived back at the residence about 808. You testified, is that correct? That is correct. At 8714. 817 and 14 seconds, what, if anything, do you see on Maggie's phone? So it's um, highlighted purple in reference to Maggie. It's going to show that her phone ended at the connection to the Mercedes Benz, which is the MBUX95224. It shows that it's unplugged. And what does that mean? What does that uh, reference mean as it relates to Maggie's phone and the Mercedes she was driving? It means that she unplugged her phone. From that, from, from that vehicle. And the data generally reflects that she's at the residence at that point? That is correct. Paul 808, Maggie 817. That is correct. Alex's last data point on his phone was 652, right? That is correct, based on the Verizon records. We have uh, at 8.17.44 p.m., do we have a battery reference for Paul? We do. It shows that his um, iPhone was at 4% battery life at that time. And as we continue forward, do we see Paul continue to use his phone? We do. At 8.19, or I'm sorry, 8.17 to 8.18, what, if anything, do we see on Maggie's phone? We're showing approximately 38 steps taken during that time frame. Right. And that would be after her phone disconnects from the Mercedes? That, that's correct. 8.19 p.m., what do we see on Paul's phone? Um, we see that he connects to a uh, PRTC Wi-Fi and that he receives a Snapchat message from uh, Ansley Wilson stating he got the magic touch. And he also sends a, another outgoing text message or Snapchat message. All right. Now, PRTC, his phone connects to PRTC. What is PRTC? So PRTC is going to be the local um, internet telephone provider for this area. Right. So it's just it's just showing a Wi-Fi connection. And was PRTC, to your knowledge, providing services to Moselle Road? To the they were there providing services to the main house and then the cabin. All right. Going below that, we have a series of communications. And whose communications are these going sort of back and forth, a series of communications? This is going to be Paul Murdaugh's um, series of communications. And I'm not going to read each one or have you read each one, but are these generally communications going back and forth with his friends? That is correct. <clears throat> and on this page, they start about what time and continue through about what time? Start around uh, 8.23 and go all the way to 8.29. Well, I think we keep on going down. Yeah, about 8.30. It's about 8.23 to 8.30. All right, at 8.30 to 8.33 p.m., what, if anything, do we see on Maggie's phone? We're showing that her phone took approximately 42 steps traveled during that time period. Right. And that starts at what time that Maggie's phone starts reflecting steps? Uh, 8.30 p.m. About 8.30. Going on to the next page, page 17. Going back just real quick on uh, page 16, 
Uh, generally, that series of communications with Paul and his friends, is he generally responding fairly quickly to the communications back and forth? He is. Either, you know, it's their Snapchat and iMessages, he's responding and using those two applications very frequently. At, now we're at the top of page 17 at 831 p.m. Uh, describe to the jury generally what this uh, data entry is. So this is going to be a uh, group message from John Marvin Murdaugh. He's talking about how they're planning to go visit um, their dad tomorrow and asking if anyone else is going. Listed here, everyone that's in that group message. And that's generally a number of family members? That is correct. And the dad they're referring to is who? Um, it's going to be Alex's dad. Mr. Randolph? That is correct. And based on your knowledge of the investigation, he had had a turn for the worst health-wise around this time? That is correct. All right, well, let's talk about that uh, very quickly. That Did the defendant receive or did his phone receive that text? His phone and Maggie's phone both received the text message. And did the defendant ever read that text according to the phone at least? According to the phone, it was not read until the following day. Uh, 6 8 of 21 at 1 p.m. And that text came in at what time? Uh, 8 31 on the dot. And did Maggie read that text right away, at least according to the phone, her phone? Uh, she did not. All right. And when did she, her phone, finally read that text? Around 8 49 26. What time? 8 49 26 is when Maggie read that text. 8 49. 8 49. At 8.31, what, if any, uh, do we, uh, entry do we see? So at the 8.31.15, Maggie Murdoch's phone unlocks and does um, orientation changes. And then at 8.31.18 to 8.49.26, we show that her phone was locked. Um, at 8.31, there's an orientation change. Uh, was her, does the data re reflect that her phone was unlocked at that period of time? That is correct. All right. And then what happens after that at 8.31 and 18 seconds? Um, her, her device is locked until 8.49.26. 8.49.26, is that correct? 8.49.26. All right. At 8.32, 25, we have an entry in green and then a line going down. Can you explain to the jury that those time periods and what, if any, significance they have? So green is going to reflect Paul Murdaugh. Anytime you see seen green, it's going to be Paul, and purple is going to be Maggie. That's reflecting that his iPhone moved approximately 283 steps during that time period. So on the left-hand side, as we go down, and you're going to see other data entry points, if you see the green next to it, that means that those steps are being traveled during those that, that time frame. And now we have a map. Whose phone is that? This is also going to be Paul Murdaugh's, um, and this is going to be his iPhone location data. All right, and where is that iPhone location data located? Um, that's going to be at the kennel, kennel area of the property. All right. And tell me the time periods that he is at the kennels at this point in time. At this point in time, he's at the kennels at 8.38.07 p.m., 8.44.53, 8.44.55, and 8.44.56. What happens at 8.40? While Paul's phone was at the kennels. Paul calls Rogan Gibson. It shows answered for four minutes and 14 seconds. Starting at what time? 8.40.20. And if you have about a four-minute call, what time does that end? 8.44. At 8.44.34, what, if anything, does Paul's phone indicate? So at... 844-34, um, Paul Murdaugh initiates a FaceTime video call with Rogan Gibson. It shows answered 11 seconds long. 
And that's based off of Paul and Rogan's information. And then at 844.55, what does it reflect on Paul's phone? This is when this video was um, extracted and created through Paul's phone, which shows Alex, Maggie, and, well, you can hear Alex, Maggie, and Paul in the background. That's the kennel video at that's 844. A, that's the kennel video that's been in previous testimony, correct? Following below that, at 847 and 848, does Paul continue to communicate with his phone? He does. He uses the iMessage feature in his phone to uh, send a couple messages to Megan Kimbrell. It looks like it's based off of movie recommendations. Are those communications for 10 minutes or just for a couple of minutes or a minute or so? A couple of minutes, a minute or so. Going to the top of page 19. Mm -hmm. What time do we see there? 8.48.29. And what's going on? What's Paul doing? He's receiving a message from Megan, and um, we have some backlight on data at 8.48.56. All right. And the next entry, tell me the time periods for that entry. 8.48.58. To 849.01. All right, and what happens there? Paul Murdaugh's phone is, that's the last time that it was unlocked. Ever? Ever. <coughs> 849.01. And the next activity that we'll see on Paul's phone occurred when? Uh, we have a backlight off from 849 to... Going back to 848 to 849.01, you said yep. that was when Paul's phone was last unlocked? That is correct. And continue on with that data entry, what does it indicate? What's the next time ever that Paul's phone shows any activity? 1018. That's when... And the 848 to 849 p.m.? I'm sorry, next activity notification is going to be the Rogan-Gibson call at 9.58.35. That's the next time that any activity or notification shows up on his phone. Looking at this entry with the green line on the right side, what are those, those time periods there, and what do they represent starting at 8.49.01? Starting at 8.49.01 to 10.34.23, Paul's phone shows device locked. Was it ever open again until it died at 10.34.23? It was not. 8.49.01 is the last time before that that Paul had ever unlocked his phone. That is correct. Just a few seconds later, does Maggie's phone reflect any activity? It does. 849.26, so approximately 26 seconds later, her phone unlocks for text message notification and it implements an orientation change. And was that that text message about Mr. Randolph that you earlier referred to? That is correct, that group message. I believe those are in response to Lynn. And at 84931, here in red, what happens to Maggie's phone? Just seconds later. Maggie Murdaugh's phone locks forever. Forever. Until when? Until it's recovered the next day at 1.10 p.m. On June 8th. On June 8th by law enforcement. Do both Maggie's and Paul's phone lock forever around 849? They do. At 
At 849.35, does Paul's phone receive a text from anyone? It does. It receives a text from Brogan Gibson. And what does that text say? See if you can get a good picture of it. Mary Ann, referring to his girlfriend, wants to see, wants to send it to a girl we know that's a vet. Tell him to sit and stay, and he shouldn't move around too much. That shows unread. You never read that? Never read it. According to the investigation, is that the conversation that Paul and Rogan were actively engaged in starting at 840? That is correct. The kennel video was at what time? 844. And did the defendant repeatedly deny that he was ever at those kennels with the victims just minutes before their phones go silent forever? Objection. Basis for the objection. Leading. It's leading. Uh, not leading, but let's restate the question. Did the defendant repeatedly deny ever being at the kennels at that yes. time period? Yes, he did. Various interviews with law enforcement. And was that kennel video? What time was that kennel video? 844. And what time did Paul and Maggie's phones go silent forever? Eight. Several times. Objection is overruled. 849 is when their phones went silent forever. At 8.53, do we see any activity on Maggie's phone? We do. At this time, as you can see to the right, her phone is locked. But we do see that um, 59 steps were traveled over the period of 8.53 to 8.55. And that just means the phone was moving, correct? That is correct. Do we see some orientation changes as well? We do. Between uh, 8.53.08 and 8.55.32, we see... Uh, various orientation changes, which would indicate that someone has the phone based on previous testimony. Moving on to page 20, at the top we have 855 and we have a reference to a data point. Can you explain that to the jury, whose phone that is, and just generally what that is based on information gathered in the investigation? 855.48. 855.48, yes, sir. That's just an uh, internal application running in the background for Maggie Murdaugh's phone. It's just um, the iPhones will take a random snapshot of what's going on in the phone. So that's just reflecting that there was some, you know, behind the scenes stuff happening in her phone. It's not saying that someone was actively using it. Hold on for me just real quick. Right here at the bottom of page 13, uh, we have a reference to stuff data on Alex's phone. That's correct. And what are those time periods? 805.35 to 809.52. It's showing 54 steps traveled. All right. We'll turn into page 20. <clears throat> What suddenly happens to Alex's phone around 9.02? Pretty much wakes up. And what data point is reflected? From 9.02.18 p.m. to 9.06.47, it shows 283 steps traveled. And how long? How many minutes, roughly? Five minutes. Five, six minutes. I'm going to show you what's been marked as Exhibit 521 to your testimony and see if you recognize that. I do. And tell me what that is, please. This is going to be a paste spreadsheet for Paul Murdaugh, Maggie Murdaugh, and Alex Murdaugh that I created. All right. 
Your Honor, at this time I would offer States 521 into evidence. No objection. Admit it. Can I have the elements, please? And, General, if I could have the screen. All right, tell the jury real quick, as we look at this exhibit, just admit it. Uh, just generally, we have it at the top. Tell, tell them quickly what this is and what these columns represent. Explain this chart, if you would. First column entry, that's just going to be from all the various um, entries from the phone data. We have a start time. We have a end time. We have the time elapsed in between the estimated amount of steps. And then we have a steps per minute calculation, which is going to be the far right. And the steps, those are the data entries in this timeline that you've been testifying to as reflected from the phone data? That is correct. And then the last co column is just a simple calculation of steps based on the time periods of those readings? That is correct. And the last step readings that we have on Paul's phone are from what time to what time? The last step reading from Paul's phone is 8.32 to 8.42. We have one for Maggie as well, is that correct? We do. Her last um, time frame is going to be 8.53 to 8.55. And then down at the bottom, who do we have? This is going to be Alex Murdaugh's pay spreadsheet. Let's talk about this a little bit. If you would, start with entry 21. And what time periods is that? And this is Alex's phone, correct? This is going to be Alex Murdaugh's um, phone. Right, time period? Uh, 6.52 to 7.02. How many steps? Approximately 283. And how many steps per minute based on a simple math calculation? Estimated 29.34. All right. 22, time period, steps, and steps per minute? 7.03 to 7.11. Approximately 165 steps, estimated 19.26 steps per minute. 24. 24 is going to be 728 to 737, approximately 47 steps, and estimated 5.46 steps per minute. 25. 741 to 748, showing 29, approximately 29 steps, 3.97 steps per minute. 26. 26 is showing 755 to 805, 270 steps, approximately uh, 28.2 steps per minute. 28. 28 is going to be the 805 to 809. It's showing approximately 74 steps at 17.28 steps per minute. And as you testified, that was the last entry on Alex's phone before we get to the 9 o'clock hour, is that correct? That is correct. And what time was the video again? 8.44 p.m. Let's talk about 27. What's the time period there? Time period to be 9.02 to 9.06. How many steps? 283 steps. 70.75 steps per minute estimated. He was a busy guy right then, wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Here's. Was that, what was the average steps per minute from 902 to 906? 70.75. Was that far in excess of any ratings on his phone in those prior entries? According to this uh, table, yes. What about the... Uh, Computer back again, please. We have a map here on Paul's phone. Tell us very quickly what that represents. We do. This is going to be based off of Verizon records for Paul Murdaugh. And it's showing uh, 903.22 and 903.30, just showing um, what cell towers it was painting off of. 
Again, is his phone still locked during this time? That is correct. Paul and Maggie's phones are still locked this time. Bottom of page 20, we got a pink box. What does that reflect? That's from the FBI telemetry data just showing a system startup with the telemetry system. On which vehicle? Me, uh, Alex Murdoch's 2021 Suburban. Is there a CDR reference to Mary Ann Dempsey attempting to call Paul? There is. Mary Ann Dempsey again is who? Uh, Rogan Gibson's girlfriend at the time. We have two entries after that. Uh, can you explain those entries to the jury and uh, tell the jury what those are, please? Yep. So at 903.52 to 904.23, uh, Maggie Murdaugh's iPhone backlight is on. At 904.23, um, Alex Murdaugh calls Maggie Murdaugh, shows 18 seconds in his CDRs. This does not show on that Dylan Hightower first extraction or the second extraction. And it also shows missed on Maggie's phone extraction. That one's missing from Alex's phone, correct? That is correct. In the call log, it is missing. At 905.15, is there any activity on Alex's phone? It shows that Alex Murdaugh calls Randolph Murdaugh, 18 seconds. Uh, does not show on Dylan Hightower extraction or the, the second extraction, just on the CDRs. We have a pinkish box. What does that represent? Pinkish box is going to represent that uh, system startup for the telemetry data for the 21 Suburban. At 906.12, what happens? Between 906.12 and 906.20, uh, Maggie Murdaugh's phone implements uh, orient change, uh, orientation change from portrait to, um, to uh, orientation sideways. At nine, that starts at 906.12? Yes, and it goes to 906.20. Orientation starts to change. What happens two seconds after that orientation starts to change? At 906.14, so that's two seconds afterwards, um, the phone receives an incoming call from Alex. Was that call on the call log when Dylan Hightower downloaded the defendant's phone? It was not. Nine of six fourteen and nine of six fifteen. Are those referencing that missed call from that showed up on Maggie's phone? That is correct. And nine of six twenty. We're still seeing an orientation change. Yep, that's when the orientation ended. <coughs> Moving down to the bottom of page twenty one, we have a blue, bluish and a green box. Tell the jury what that is. So. Um, According to the FBI telemetry data, the blue is going to indicate a, uh, a, a shift in the transmission, and then green is going to show um, driving. The Suburban's underway? Uh, that is correct, according to the telemetry data. At the bottom of page 21, is there another call from Alec Murdoch's phone to Maggie's phone? There is. At 906.52, Alex, Alex calls Maggie. It shows uh, seven seconds long. And that's based off his of CDR since it was uh, deleted off the call history. It wasn't on Alex's extraction, correct? It was not. Two missed calls? Two missed calls. Moving to page 22 at the top. What, if anything, does Alex Murdoch's phone show in relation to the Suburban? So it's just showing that um, it, you know the device connected to the car, when you get in your car, it will, your phone will pair. It's just showing a, a device connection to iPhone. And then the next entry, there's a time range there. Explain that time range to the jury and what that means. So starting at 9.07 and going till uh, 9.44. 9 what? Sorry, 9.31.44, her backlight is off. Her backlight is off. Mm -hmm. That entire time period. That entire time period. It was on, but now it from for this time period from 907 to 931, 
it's going to show off. Going to this map, is that some of the cast data that you did that you've testified to the jury? It is. This is a previous slide that we had up. It's showing at 907.06. Um, the Suburban is leaving 4147 Moselle Road. <clears throat> Two calls to Maggie. Does the Suburban just take a quick right and go down this road right there to the kennels, or does it just continue straight on? It just continues straight on. Doesn't stop by the kennels for a second, does it? it does it stop by the kennels? His vehicle does not stop by the kennels. Keeps right on going. Keeps right on going to Moselle Road, makes right. Going down to the bottom of page 22. This is just another data point. It's showing the uh, approximate location of Maggie Murdoch's phone when it was located. And at 90, it's 908.36, it's showing 42 miles an hour on Moselle Road. And in reference, we're coming up to Godley Farm Road on Moselle Road. <coughs> This is at 908.36. And then we have, below that, we have a reference to a data point that you previously showed to the jury at 908.42. Yep, it's going to be on the next page. All right. It's going to be at 908.42, and it's showing approximate miles per hour of 45 in reference to where the phone was found the next day. And what's the speed on the defendant's vehicle at that point? Uh, 45 miles an hour. And is Maggie's backlight off during this time period, this entire time period? Her phone is locked. Yes. And the backlight is off. At 908.58, what do we see? Alex Murdoch sends a I message to Maggie stating, going to check on M, be right back. This shows unread in Maggie's phone. Moving on, does Alex's phone reflect a series of calls being made? It does. Tell me about the first one. First one's going to be at 910.47. Alex calls Buster, it shows 60 seconds long. That's based off of CDR since it's not in his phone extractions. And that's again also missing from that entire series of, of events around the time of the murders that was not on Alex's extraction when it was downloaded. That is correct. It's not in the call log. I'll move on. Then ask them answer. Down at 912.14, what if any activity is reflected on the defendant's phone? Alex Murdoch calls Chris Wilson. It shows 42 seconds long. That's based off his CDRs because it's not in any of his phone extractions or call log. It's connection time as well? It does. Moving on to page 24, we have a map. Tell the jury quickly what this map reflects. This is going to be Alex Murdoch. Um, location map from Verizon. It's going to show at 9-12-14 what tower and what sector it's pinging off of and then at 9-18-46 what tower it's pinging off of. The red dot's going to be Moselle. Green one is going to be the Alameda property. Moving on to the next map, is that similar information of the defendant's trip from Moselle to Alameda? It's similar. It's just going to show you the coverage areas for each um, tower. And then on page 26, what does this map reflect? This is going to be Verizon Records for CB Row. Far right, the um, little red dot, that's going to be Moselle. Blue dot is going to be CB Row's um, home in Brunson. This is just showing the, the cell tower data at the time frame of 914, 920, and 921. And? In 1137 p.m. This is um, close to Fairfax, just for reference. He's pinging. In the ark near his home over here in Fairfax, is that right? That is correct. The home's where's Moselle? 
Those L's can be that red, that red dot to the right. At 918.46, what if any activity is reflected on the defendant's phone? At 918.46, Alex Murdoch calls John Marvin Murdoch. It shows 106 seconds, and that's, that's from his CDR since it's not on either phone extraction call log. All right, we're on page 26 now. Tell the jury quickly what this map reflects. This is also going to be Verizon records from Alex Murdoch's phone plotted. It's showing starting at uh, 62034 all the way to 94635. It's showing um, from the cell tower in the sector of Almeda. You said 624 or 920? I'm sorry, 92034. So roughly 20 minute period at Rough, Almeda? Roughly 20 minutes, correct. Moving over to page 27, what is this map? This is just going to be a zoomed in picture from the previous one. Um, just showing the same time frame, just showing a little bit more zoomed in from the cell tower in proximity to uh, Almeda. At 92034, what if anything happens on the defendant's phone? At this time, uh, Chris Wilson calls Alex at 92034, shows for 131 seconds, and it we got this data from his CDR since it does not show on his either one of his extractions. And during that time, Claude CB row at 921.36 calls, but Alex does not answer it. And again, his phone was pinging back at his house in Fairfax at that time period, correct? That is correct. We see the uh, blue and green box. Tell the jury what's happening with Alex's Suburban at this point. So at 21.22, which that's military time, it's going to be 9.22. Green is going to show um, vehicle movement, and blue is going to show um, transmission shifting. And so uh, is that data. consistent with the OnStar data at 9.22.49 of him arriving in Alameda? It is. And on page 28, is that that data point that you just referenced? That is correct, 922.39. Starting about 9.22, does Alex's phone reflect any step activity? It does, 9.22.39 to 9.32.14. We're showing approximately 195 steps taken on his phone. At 9.24.13, what, if anything, does the defendant phone reflect? He calls um, Libby Murdaugh, which would be his mom, shows 20 seconds long. That's from his CDRs because it's not on either phone extraction. And that would be the line, line, the landline at Alameda? That's correct. After that, is there another missed call from Rogan to Paul? There is at 926.06 p.m. And then at 931.44, is that the first backlight activity on Maggie's phone since that time period you touched about earlier, about 907? That is correct. At 9.34, around that same time, is there any communication on Maggie's phone around the time of that backlight activity? There is. At 9.34.14, Rogan Gibson sends an iMessage to Maggie Murdoch saying, tell me to, tell Paul to call me. And that shows unread. Never read? Never read. <laughs> Do we also have backlight activity associated with a missed call to Maggie's phone? We do at 934.20. Up here at 934 to 936.20, it says Maggie, my, Maggie Murdahl's iPhone backlight. Is that backlight off? That's going to be backlight off. Just the off is missing from the words? That is correct. 9.35 and 9.45, 10 minute period. Is there any activity on Alex's phone? It's showing approximately 60 steps taken on his phone during that time frame. And also, as you see on the right hand side, Paul and Maggie's phones are locked. It's referenced with the lines and the color coordination on the right hand side. 
And those lines have been continuing through the past few days. They've been continuing, correct. We have some, uh, some orange and purple boxes. Quickly tell the jury what those are. So the orange color is going to be that system startup from previous testimony from, from Falkowski. And then the pink is going to be um, engine running propulsion. And is there another missed call from Rogan to Paul? There is at 942.17, there's a, uh, a missed call. And then we have Alex's Suburban showing a device connection at 942.49, which is consistent with the data. All right. Telemetry. Suburban's leaving Almeda around this time? That is correct, 943.18. We show it starting at two miles an hour. We have some additional telemetry consistent with him leaving? We do. Is there uh, any activity on Maggie's phone at this point? So at 944.04 to 945.04, um, it shows that her backlight was off. And is there a missed call associated with that backlight activity or around the same time? Uh, yes. Maggie Murdoch received a call from, it's going to show his PA in the phone extraction, which is it's, it's Alex's number, and it shows missed. And was that call missing from Alex's phone extraction? It was. It was missing from both phone extractions. Going down to 946.35, what, if any, activity do you see? Uh, it shows that Alex Murdoch called Paul Murdoch. shows 18 seconds long. That's with the connection time. And um, that is based off of Alex's CDRs. It does not show in um, either extractions. 947.23, what, what do we say, if anything? Alex sends an iMessage to Maggie stating, call me, babe. And that shows unread in Maggie Murdoch's extraction. And we see some backlight activity around the time of that? Text message, that unread text message? We do, a couple seconds. We have a map here. Just generally, what does this reflect? We do. This is going to reflect the coverage area of um, the cell tower between um, Moselle and Almeda. And this is uh, whose phone? This is going to be Alex Murdaugh's uh, phone. This is going to be his um, Verizon records, not location data for phone. Moving towards the direction of Moselle? That is correct. Additional maps consistent with that as testified to by Matt Wild? That is correct, just showing coverage area. At 952.15, what been the activity is on Alex's phone? So at 952.15, Alex Murdaugh. Um, Sends an iMessage to Chris Wilson saying, call me if up. Just around the time where he's running 80 miles an hour? That's correct. 951.43 is when we have the 80.16 mile per hour. All right, moving over to the next page, is there any further activity? Um, Alex ends up receiving a call from Chris Wilson at 952.59. Shows 42 seconds long with connection. That is also not on either extraction. And at 953.55, he receives another call from Chris Wilson. Shows 123 seconds. And um, that is on his CDRs, but not on either phone extraction. And then from at about 956.57, what if any activity do you see on Alex's phone? So from 956.57 to 1006.57, um, it shows that Alex Murdoch traveled 231, approximately 231 steps traveled during that time. Starting at what time? 9.56.57 to 10.06.57. Remind the jury what time the 911 call was? It was 10.06.14. At 9.57 and 9.58, what activities reflected on Paul's dressers? So Rogan Gibson calls Paul Murdoch, shows four seconds. Um, and that's based off of CDRs. And then at uh, 9.58.35, Rogan sends a text message to Paul stating, yo. And that hits Paul's phone? That is correct. And it, it, shows, red. it shows unread from his phone extraction.
We have a bunch of green and blue boxes. Uh, is this more telemetry data uh, from the Suburban? This is. The green's going to represent drives, and blue is going to represent um, some kind of gear shifting with the vehicle. But the GM OnStar data reflects what, about 10 on the dot? It reflects him pulling into the driveway at 4147 Moselle Road, the main entrance. And where did the Suburban go first? The uh, Suburban went uh, directly to the, the house, bottom left. It didn't go to the kennels first, it went to the house first? That is correct. And what time does it arrive at the house? Or what time right there in that map? That's what the map at the top? That's of, what the time that it pulls into the driveway. Sorry, one second. At 10.03.36 p.m., uh, is, there's two entries around that time. Can you tell the jury what any activity you see as it relates to Maggie's phone? So Alex Murdoch calls Maggie Murdoch's phone at 10.03.58 and um, backlight is on associated with that. And then starting about 10.04.08, what don't we see for the time period? So from 10.04.08 to 10.46.40, um, there is a, a gap in activity. I don't see any activity on Maggie's phone at all through the Knowledge C database. At 10.05.06, what, if anything, does the data reflect? It uh, reflects um, Alex's Suburban leaving the main house based on the GM data. Going over to page 35, is this one of your cast maps? Yes, it is. It's uh, 10.05.06, and it's showing uh, the time the Suburban starts to leave down to the kennels. And going to the next map, what time is that? Next map is going to be 10.05.57. That's, what, that's the arrival time at the kennels. According to that GPS location data? Yes, sir, by, from GM and OnStar. What's that time again? It's going to be 10.05.57. Down at the bottom of the page, what time is the 911 call? 10.06.14. How many seconds is that from the time the, the Suburban arrives at the kennels and he calls 911? Roughly 20 seconds. 20 seconds? That's correct. Do you recall the defendant's statements to law enforcement shortly after the crime? That he went over and checked the bodies and that sort of thing? I do. What, if anything, in his statements to law enforcement did the defendant say about what he did when he arrived at the scene? The defendant stated that he um, went and checked on Paul and Maggie to check the bodies. And from the moment the Suburban arrived at the kennels, how long did it take for that 911 call to be made? Less than 20 seconds. Another call from Rogan to Paul that never be answered? That is correct. 10 never answered. At 10 11 54, what happens? This is when uh, Alex Murdoch was on the 911 call, stated he was going to go get a gun. This was at uh, 10 11 54. This is when the Suburban is showing leaving the kennels. And down at the bottom of page 36, we see another map. What does that reflect? That's going to be 10, 13, 54. And on the next page, it's going to show the map. That's when um, it, his suburban left the main house going back to the kennels. And what time does the location data reflect that the suburban arrived back to the kennels? 10, 14, 30 is when it's going to reflect driving back to the kennels. 
or approximately. This is when he's coming into the, the view of the kennels. And then what time does the 911 call end? So the 911 call is going to end at 10.17. And then the step data is what the 10, 16, 37 p.m. is referring to. That's going to be when his step data ended. I believe it was 594 steps taken. After the 911 call, does the defendant's phone reflect any activity? It does. It shows him uh, calling Randy Murdaugh. It shows 16 seconds long with the connectivity <coughs> time. And that's based off his CDRs. It was not found on either extraction. Then also we have a 1018 where he's um, sending a text message to Randy saying, please, please call me emergency. Is there a step activity around this time on the office phone? There is a 1018.53 to 1028.05. We're showing approximately 525 steps taken during that time frame. And does Paul's backlight come on again at 1018? It does. 1018.08 to 1018.20. We're showing backlight. Was that after the 911 call it ended? No. I'm sorry, yes. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. So 10 is when the 911 call ended, and this would have been at 10 18 08. So this would have been right after. And the last text that hit Paul's phone was from whom? Uh, Robin Gibson. I believe it said yo. Paul's phone still hitting, of course, at the kennel location? That is correct. This is going to be off of his iPhone location data. And where was Paul's phone found again, according to your knowledge of the investigation? It was found on um, Paul's rear end, facing up. Top of page 39, we have a map. What does that reflect? This is going to reflect um, Verizon records for Alex Murdaugh, starting at 1019 all the way to 1118. And it's just showing the um, the sector it was pinging off of, and that's in the area of Moselle Road. All right, and we have a range of times there from the 10-ish hour to the 11-ish hour p.m. without being there. That is correct. Does Alex phone reflect a couple of calls that were not on his extraction, but in the CDRs? It does. To to what people? It's going to be to Randy Murdaugh, John Marvin. And then um, Rogan Gibson, and then 10, Christy. At ten twenty oh eight, what if any activity does Paul's phone reflect? So Paul's phone shows a display on screen auto lock. It, it, it's been locked. It's just documenting a auto lock. Display on auto lock. Mm -hmm. And uh, auto lock can be consistent with what, according to your understanding? According to the, my understanding, is that auto lock could be. Um, it doesn't recognize like a face, so it automatically locks, or it could be um, just hitting like on the iPhone, the power button on the side. And what was the last text that hit Paul's phone again? Who was it from? Rogan Gibson. And what does the defendant do just seconds later? Calls Rogan Gibson. Mm -hmm. Was that on the Dillon Hightower extraction? It, it was not on the Dillon Hightower extraction or the second one. You mentioned before that there was a group text about Mr. Randolph's health. And the def when did the defendant finally read that text? Um, the following day. So that would be June 8th, 2021. At 10.2209, was there a text that the defendant read? Uh, there was. 10.2209, he received a group text message from Michael Gunn and a few people um, saying she brought the heat from Miami boys. And it was read the same night at 10.38.42 p.m. and the associated picture is below. The 10.24 and the 10.25 hours, what if anything does the uh, defendant's phone reflect? Um, Alex tries to call Rogan and then um, he sends an iMessage stating, call me. And then he um, attempts to do a FaceTime and this is going to be the first the first log that we see on his phone records is going to be um, this FaceTime call with Rogan on his extraction for the day of June 7th, 2021. Multiple attempts to contact Rogan, huh? That's correct. 
And what time does law enforcement <coughs> arrive on the scene? Approximately 10.25 is when the first deputy arrived on scene. 10.25? That's correct. We see step activity around this time on Alex's phone? We do. So we had um, a group of step activity end at 10.28.54, and then we had a new group start at 10.28.54 that goes to 10.37.27. It's showing 320 steps traveled approximately. And does the defendant's phone reflect any phone activity after that? It reflects at 10.29.17 a call to Randy. That shows answered 42 seconds long. That's also not on the extraction. And then a FaceTime with Rogan at 10.30.31. That does show on the extraction. That was attempted FaceTime? That's correct. I believe his previous testimony, Rogan said he was asleep during the time. Moving on to page 41. This is going to be a Paul Murdoch Verizon records. And this is just going to show the um, cell the, the, the tower and then just the location. And you can see Moselle Road within it. This is a 1034 time period. Is there a display on activity on Paul's phone, but also a phone call from Nolan Tootin around that time? That is correct. So correct. Around 1034, it's showing uh, display on and then a Nolan Tootin phone call. And then finally, what time does Paul's phone finally die? Paul's phone finally dies at 1034, 24 p.m. on June 7th, 2021. Almost two hours after the criminal video? That is correct. Phone stays locked until when? Um, the following day, June eighth, around one ten p.m. When the investigators find it. When the investigators find it. That is correct. I'm going to show you a couple of exhibits. We're almost done, and everybody's hungry. I'll show you what's been marked as 523. If you're uh, to this trial, states 523, do you recognize that? I do. And tell the jury just where that's from, please. This is going to be a text message I retrieved from one of um, the Cellbrite extraction reports. It's me from Paul to Alex. Your Honor, this time I'd offer states 523 into evidence. Your Honor, we would renew the previous objections. Have no additional objections. Or 403. I see the exhibit. Right, yes,
I'm going to show 523. And this is a text from from which person to which person? So this is going to be from Paul Murdaugh, and it's going to be to, it says voicemail. That's going to refer to Alex. This is obtained from his phone. It's going to be the owner. So that's going to be Paul to Alex. And what's the date? The date is going to be uh, May 6, 2021 at 1052, 13 a.m. And what does it say? It says, I am still in EB because when you get here, we need to talk. Mom found several bags of pills in your computer bag. And this is again from Paul to Alex on May 6. States 553. Let's see if you recognize this exhibit. Okay. I do. Tell me what that is. This is going to be um, some searched items that I obtained from uh, Maggie Murdaugh's extraction report. Your Honor, at this time I'd offer States 553, I believe, without additional objection. No additional objections, Your Honor. Admit it. And tell the jury what this exhibit is, please. So this is going to be uh, Google searches. Um, far left, you're going to have a timestamp, the source, which is going to be Safari. That's for um, Apple. And then the value is going to be the searched item. And on May 26, 2021, at 11.21 p.m., Maggie searched green gel pill P30. She also searched... Um, 11:20 p.m. A green pill, a green gel pill P30, white pill 30 on one side RP, and if you look to the right, you're going to see a column that says deleted. That one is showing yes has been deleted, and then if we go down to row number four, it's going to be May 6, 2021, from Safari, white pill 30 on one side RP, and that's also shown deleted. Could you slide it down just a little bit? I just want to make sure there's not another yeah, entry. Okay. What's been working states five five six and see if you recognize this exhibit. I do. And tell just generally what is this? This is gonna be a text message thread between um, Alex Murdaugh and Russell Lafitte. And at the time, where did Russell Lafitte work again to your understanding? Uh, Palmetto State Bank. And uh, your honor, this time I would offer states five five six, I believe, without additional objection. No additional objections beyond that four three four or four objections previously ruled upon. See the exhibit.
can uh, put states 556 up on the screen. And again, tell the people on this text and the time and what it says. So this is going to be a uh, text from voicemail, which is going to be Alex Murdoch's phone, to Russell Lafitte. It was sent on June 3rd, 2021 at 3.22 p.m. This is from Alex stating, I need to extend farm credit line another 600000 My dad will sign also if needed. How much turnaround will that take? And again, that's from Alex to Russell Lafitte on June 3rd, 2021. Show you two final exhibit states five five four and five 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 and you recognize those? I do. And where were those found? These are found from Maggie Murdaugh's iPhone extraction. Your Honor, this time I don't offer five five four and five 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 into evidence, I believe without objection. Okay. There's no Thanks, 554. Five, Who is that? It's going to be Maggie Murdoch and her sister. States 555. Five, five. Who is that? It's going to be Buster Murdoch, Maggie Murdoch, and Paul Murdoch. Thank you, Special Agent. Please answer any questions the defense may have. Ladies and gentlemen, we break for lunch now for an hour and 15 minutes. Please do not discuss the case. Please do not discuss your testimony during lunch. And we'll be in recess. All right.